So this is the build of the Iron 2 display board. Whoops, there are the Iron 2s. There's the display board um, and the cathode circuit first of all. So what we're going to need for this is four opto isolators, OK1, OK2, OK3, OK4. Four 1K resistors, which go into the spaces next to them, R1, R2, R3, and R4. And four 3K resistors, which go in R5, R6, R7, and R8. Also, we're gonna put the two connectors on, um, and then we can give it a test with the, um, the main board. So, what we're gonna do is, first of all, we're going to pop in the opto-isolators. So they've got a notch shown on there, but actually on the opto isolator there's a dot. And the dot goes in pin one, which is this top left one here. So we are just going to put these guys in one. Four, and bearing in mind the dot goes top left. So I'm going to solder in one pin on each of them and then we're going to check that they are sitting properly and aligned properly. That looks quite good. So with the opto isolators don't dwell on them too long. They are um, they're a bit sensitive to heat, and whatever you do, don't fill up the resistor sockets, the pads next to them, because otherwise you'll have trouble opening them up again. resistors in and the 1k are reading from left to right, right, brown, black, red, gold. And we're going to fold these over and we're going to put the body on the upside. It's up to you how you do it but it's best if you do them all the same way. So I'm just going to prop it up so that they don't get pushed out when I put the board down. I said I was going to put the body on the upside, didn't I? So let's turn that one around. It's a bit fiddly. Okay. And then I'm just going to use the table to hold the components in place. I'm going to solder one lead. And straighten those up and align them, they all look good. Solder the other lead. Trim. Now for the 3K resistors, and to do this, grab the resistor body and just fold the leads down. And that should set them more or less to the right length. Don't uh, fold them down too hard, and then you'll find that they automatically end up all I'm doing is I'm bending the leads out the other side so they don't fall out again. So this is a super simple build. There's really nothing tricky about this at all. Okay, those are those guys in.
Okay, last bit to do. Now we're going to put in the headers. And to do that, here's a main board that I've already uh, that I've already made. And the easiest way is we just put the headers in the main board. Now the trick about this design is the LEDs on the back here shine through the holes for the backlighting. So we just have to make sure they line up the right way. And then we can solder these headers on. I'm just going to do one at the top, one at the bottom. Now the reason for doing it like this is this way we're sure that the headers will fit nicely when you come to assemble it afterwards. So we know they're going to be straight and they're going to be aligned the way they need to be. So now... That should be us, that's this step done. Now we can just test, assemble these. One thing it makes sense to do at this point is decide whether you're going to be using LEDs or neons. And I'm going to be using neons on this. And to do that, you can see neon next to the common on jumper one, and you just put a, a solder bridge over them. And a bit of solder there, you see there's a little solder bridge. And that sets the um, backlights to be neons. I only did that now because when we put the tube in, it gets fiddly to, um, to actually do it, to, to set that afterwards. So let us see, you have to be a bit careful here. So the top of the board needs to go to the top of the board. So there we go. This is the top. Um, don't worry about this. This is a previous prototype version with a smaller regulator on it. Um, that's been changed now. Okay, and we're just going to fit, just for the purposes of test, just place these uh, IN2s in there. It might just get, now that one's a bit loose, won't bother about that one then. So now we can test it, and to do that, I'll just plug some power in. And this connector here, so ground and V in. Let's do this startup sequence. Okay, so. So that seems to be working. The uh, backlights aren't so bright because, um, to be honest, we don't have the uh, LDR installed at the moment. That's just because I haven't soldered it in properly. When it's soldered in, it will be fine. So to complete the build of um, this display board, what we're going to do is we're going to put in two MPSA 42s here, Q1 and Q2, and four resistors, um, 1K resistors. So again, 1K, let's take a quick look at them. That is brown, black, red. And we're going to put the four resistors in R9, R10, R11, and R12. We're not going to put the LDR or the LEDs in yet because to know how uh, to mount those, we have to wait till we get the uh, the tubes in. So let's put these guys in. So first of all, with the uh, two MPSA 42s, you have to make sure they go the right way around. So that means with the the flat side pointing in towards the middle of the board. Uh, that's clearly marked 
on the board on the silk screen itself. Shouldn't be too hard to remember. Mount them so they're not too low and not too high. And then you can solder them into place. My soldering iron has just come on, so I'm just preparing it. So that means to prepare it, just to show you what I'm doing, it's a stinky old uh, sponge here. But in effect, what I do to prepare it is, you see it's got some tarnish on there. I tin it and then take that off and it's no longer tarnished. And now you can see it's taking the solder well. So I'm going to solder in just one pin of each of these at the moment. These are quite fine pitch pins, so they're a bit tricky to solder. But if you take my um, advice here, you'll trim off, you'll put in one lead, and then you'll trim off the other two leads as well. And that means it's quite easy to get in here and just give a little tiny dab of solder on there. It means it makes the access a lot easier. Um, you shouldn't dwell too much on them. Oh, MPSA 42s, they're kind of bulletproof, but still, it's not good to, to dwell on them too much. So, we're going to put in R9, and again, just bend down the leads. Slot it in. Should go in nicely. Straighten out the leads on the other side, spread them out so it doesn't fall out. Now it comes to putting the tubes in, and they can only go in one way, so there's no uh, no chance of getting them wrong. But I would give you one word of warning here: don't don't do what I did. Don't put them in the sockets and squeeze them all the way down. If you do that, I'll show you if uh, you can see. If you do that, you're going to snap the base and after that the tubes are useless so don't be tempted to do this this is a broken one so there's nothing to lose here don't put it in and push it down you'll hear a little click and that will be the end of the tube so let me put the, the four tubes in and the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to just wet one pad of each tube just enough to hold it in okay so all I've done is I've put a little blob of solder on this pin here now then when I come back to it in a second I can put it in a bit more and we're going to mount them a little bit away off the board um, and it allows me then to actually fiddle about with them and align them so that they are all pointing in roughly the same direction. So I'm just going to put the pairs in and I'm just going to solder that one pin at the moment. Okay, so you, know, you can see those two are pointing in different directions. If I adjust it we can make them point in the right way and also be at the same height and also do it from the front and keep the joint that looks about right so 
Sometimes the pins on the iron twos are a little bit bent. You have to very gently adjust them so that they want to go in the sockets. This one, for example, you can see these pins are um, not in the right position. It actually can help you a bit because it means you can put the tubes in and they kind of stay where they're put. So this one is a bit bent. The IN2 tubes are really fragile, so be a bit careful with them. And also these are very old ones. These are from 1979 and 1981. Okay, and once you've got them in place, You can solder those, those pins. Okay, so I think that's the first step done. Now what I'm going to do, so you've still got a little bit of possibility to move them around. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to solder, in effect, let me get some helping hands. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to solder another pin firm them up a bit. And then finally, when I'm totally happy with the position they are, I'm going to put in the third pin. So I already tested these tubes, they are all okay. Let's give another little test to make sure I haven't destroyed anything while I've been uh, working on it. So here's the what it goes on. Let's plug that in and see the startup sequence. Logging into the Wi-Fi. So this one, what's going on with this one? Okay, it's not unusual that some of the pins don't work, but I'm a bit concerned that tube there. Okay, that's no, all right. It's all right. If I just gently twist it a bit, then it's okay. All right, those tubes seem okay. So what I'll do is I'll finish off the soldering. They all seem to be in the right sort of position and they all seem to be working. So let's bring my, my hands back. And let's finish off the soldering on these pins. I'm gonna do, my back I'm just gonna go around now and finish them off. To me looks to be about right. So let's have a, another go with the, with the display and the, and the board. Let's see what comes out of that. So powering on again, power on self-test. Slight problem there. Ok, 
clearly got a solder bridge going on here somewhere on this. Oh, I can see it. Look, there it is. My bad. Okay, I think that's the only one. Should have actually spotted that before. But of course it didn't. So let's try that again. Have to be careful about getting it the right way up. Let's have another go, shall we? Okay, that's the version number. So we've still got a link between four and five somewhere. Okay. Okay, let's um, have another, another look. Also, be in the worst case that the the tubes are bad. And that's quite unusual. This guy's here. Look. A bit suspect. out between them. The rational thing to do at this point would be to look at the data sheet, the IN2, and see which is the 4 and which is the 5, and actually inspect. There we go, it's probably that one there, look, there's something going on there. It's a bit fiddly to get these guys going. Okay, it's gone green. There we go, we got it. 